Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to have you guys here. Welcome to my show. Uh, today is February. It's a Thursday, the 27th, 2020. And listen, I'm glad to have all of you guys here. Now, you know, there's an awful lot going on in the world right now. It's ha happening so fast, it's hard to keep up with it all. Uh, let's get started. Let's open up the charts right here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the gold price today, you know. Now, here, I got a lot to say today. First thing I got to say is we're entering the front side of an, a massively enormous crisis. This crisis that we're entering into right now, if you compare the size of it, right now it's the size of a pea. And it can, it has the potential to grow into the size of a watermelon, okay? So figuring it out mathematically, I kind of run the numbers through my calculator real quick, and it's like this crisis can grow like 80,000 times larger. Look at the disruption it's already caused. It can grow 80,000 times more bigger than it is right now and affect the world with that much more disruption. And this is, I don't, and to tell you the truth, the likelihood of it growing, we've been warned by agencies within the government that the potential is that it will grow like that much bigger and that much greater, okay? And there's no signs of it abating or moving backwards or becoming less or lessening its effect. And it's been completely underestimated by the uh, by the markets, just how powerful this crisis is that's happening. So this is why I've concluded that there's going to be a certain point, probably the countdown is already underway, where they're just going to basically have to close the markets. And that's what I believe. Like, if, if you think that's never been done before, yes, it has. They close the markets at times when needed. They can. They can close them so that there's no trading going on, you know. Uh, in, in a time of crisis or peril, sometimes they have to do things like that. They have to take uh, unusual measures, you know. But you know what? If they close the markets and I don't have markets to report on here, I'm still going to do a show for you guys. Now, I can't guarantee you what exactly what kind of a show it's going to be. It might be a show where where I'm not got a screen here and a green screen and stuff. I might be a, a more of a real life kind of show, you know. Uh, as long as I got power, <laughs> electricity, I'm going to be doing a show for you guys. As long as I got internet, I'm going to be doing a show for you guys. Now I want to talk about something important here. The government. <clears throat> this is very important. The government has to take a supportive role, a, t a very specific type of supportive role. And one of the, really, the things that they, they're going to need to do is ensure that food distribution doesn't get cut off. They're going to have to, it's, it, and no matter what it takes, you know how they've done whatever it takes in the financial system? Well, if the markets are closed, they're not going to need to worry about the financial system so much. You know, just just print up a lot more money and dump it in there. And that should take care of the financial system. You know, if they dump enough. I mean, just go ahead and hyperinflate the dollar. And just go ahead and, and print whatever they need to print. You know, and, and just do it. Do it. Support support the, the, the core system. Because the outer fringes of the financial system is probably... What we're going into is massive. You know, and, and so... They need the support so that food production doesn't get cut off, especially to these big cities. Because, uh, you know, I mean, okay, it just should be, I shouldn't really have to explain it to you guys why you don't cut food off to a big city. Because people need food in order to live. It's just a very simple, basic necessity of life. You know, so that, this is important. This is important. But let's move on, take a look at gold today. Look, gold's up $14.40. It's the only thing that's up other than U.S. Treasury bonds. So there's two things right now that are up. U.S. Treasury bonds and gold. 
Now silver's not up. Uh, let me take a look. I looked at it a minute at a minute ago. Yeah, it's only up. It's up eleven cents. It says, but it's not really up. You know, silver is is lagging behind gold. There's going to come a point though when silver won't lag. Silver and gold travel together. They're traveling buddies. Okay, they're like Laurel and Hardy. You know, getting on the train to go to Cleveland. You know, I mean, you're going to see Laurel stick with Hardy. You know, on the train to Cleveland, he's not gonna. He's you're not. If you want to find Laurel, find Hardy, and you'll find Laurel. Well, that's the way with gold. Gold's Hardy, and silver's Laurel. And the two of them travel together. They're traveling buddies. And so, you know, if gold shoots up to the moon, you know, silver's gonna follow along. Silver's gonna travel with gold. They always have. They all, all the way through history. It's always silver and gold, or gold and silver. You know, buddies. They're buddies. Okay. Cryptocurrency today, two hundred and fifty-one point nine billion dollars for the industry, sixty-four percent Bitcoin dominance, and Bitcoin cryptocurrencies are being slaughtered. Bitcoin has lost over a thousand dollars in the last day or two, eighty-eight thirty-seven. You know, and if we move down to Litecoin, we see sixty-two forty-six. I use Litecoin to gauge Bitcoin. These are the two traveling buddies, again, in the cryptocurrencies, like gold and silver, you know. Uh, it's those two. Now, a lot of people, uh, they, they're enamored with Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin SV, and all that. That's in between the two traveling buddies, Litecoin and, and Bitcoin. But Litecoin and Bitcoin are gold and silver, you know. And you see on the chart here... Bitcoin drops 3% and Litecoin drops a little bit more than 3%. They travel together. Anyway, moving on here, let's take a look at the Dow today. She's down 613 points. Could today be the first 2,000 point drop day? I'm not sure. But it doesn't look good today. But when further bad news comes in, really bigger, badder news than what we're having now, we could see the 2,000 point drops, you know, before they have to close these markets. Uh, now, I, that's just my opinion, by the way, that they'll close the markets. But I think you'll see that that'll come true because, you know, I've been on top of this thing ahead of these other guys all the way along. Uh, before they were saying that this was the black swan, I had it nailed. I nailed it as the black swan, and I was waiting for this black swan to come along, but I didn't know it was going to take this this form. I thought it would be something else, you know. I was looking, I was looking at, but that's the nature of a black swan. You don't see it coming until it hits. But I was right on top of it when it first hit, you know. Uh, I was in there early. You can see my show there, Black Swan, and that's quite a while ago, you know now. But, uh, okay, we're down 574 now. It's bounced a little bit. Uh, some suckers come in, and he's uh, bought on the dip. <laughs> okay, guys, let's move on. Uh, we're 26,410 on the Dow and uh, declining. Let's move on and take a look at oil. Oil's 46.50. Now, oil has lost a big chunk. It's lost over 4% today alone. It's down 2.23, uh, $2.23 down today. Now, that's big. That's bigger than the down in the Dow, you know, but 46.50. Oil producers, you know, oil's not going to drop too low because I'll tell you what will happen is with oil. Oil producers will pull the plug on the wells if the oil price drops down too low. Okay, that, that oil production will drop, will fall, and it'll fall back down to uh, to to meet whatever the demand is, you know. The production will drop, because especially with these shale oil wells, you know, they need about $40 just to get it out of the ground. And at forty six fifty is not leaving them much room. Now, over in Saudi Arabia, they need about, uh, oh, 27 $28. Twenty-eight dollars a barrel, so they can go a lot lower. The Saudis can go a lot lower, you know, and still and still and still make money, you know, than than the shale oil producers in the uh, in the in the uh, big oil basins in the United States. I think the Eagleford and the uh, 
uh, there's some big oil basins in the United States, you know, that they've been draining them dry for years, and, and they're mostly all dry now. Uh, they have to use high pressure to get the oil up and out. Let's take a look now at U.S. Treasuries. And we are seeing massive moves in the Treasuries today, especially in the middle of the yield curve. Look at this. The U.S. one year, over a full basis point. One almost, it's it's 12 basis points. It's it's 12 basis points is what it basically is. It's, it, it, and in the U.S. six months, it's, it's just over. I mean, these are huge, huge drops uh, in yields. Uh, all the way up to the 30 year. 30 years even getting a 3.8 basis point drop, you know, and the 10 years, 4.4 basis point drop. We're looking at a 10 year, 1.26. 1.26, guys. 1.76 on the U.S. 30 year. Uh, you know, and, and uh, these investors are just going crazy, snatching up these. And, and no, I don't believe when you see these yields dropping all the way out to the end of the yield curve, I don't believe it's the Fed doing it. The Fed is only buying T-bills, short-term treasury bills. That's all they're buying. Uh, they're not buying all the way out on the yield curve. But somebody is. Somebody's buying heavy because they're scared and they're trying to get into these, which they see as being the safest of the safe havens. Yes, the United States government is not going to default on these. But on the other side of that coin, you have to realize <clears throat> that all the United States government actually has to do is just print to not default. And then what's your money worth, ultimately, in the end? I, I'm surprised, you know, that gold isn't going up massively, you know? Let's take a look now at the U.S. dollar index, and we're seeing the dollar fall today. 98.52 on the U.S. dollar index. Uh, and we're seeing quite a steep decline in the dollars. It's, it's fell a half a penny. That's, that's pretty big, you know, uh, for the dollar. For the dollar, that's a big fall. Anyway, listen, thank you guys for listening to this show. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. and. Uh, We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.